What is up, guys? I'm going to talk one, two, three here. Jack McNeil. I want to make this video pretty much for my subscribers, my new subscribers, because I want to apologize. And I truly do mean this. Um, I love making videos. It's very fun. It does take a lot of work. And when I'm in my, what well, you could say, zone, I would be making videos on every trade and free agent signing that occurs. Now, obviously, I'm not because you have huge signings and a, a few big trades in the past few days involving Denard Spam. I mean, these are guys that if this was not this week, um, I would be just, you know, a lot of excitement. There are a lot of news about them, and I'd be making videos on them, but I had uh, a tough week family-wise um, and just a lot of stuff going on. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna, I apologize again for not making the videos. You can see if I'm making a video on a webcam, it probably means that I'm either A, too lazy to make a video um, and really work at it, or um, B, I think there's just so much to cover that there needs to be a, a recap video. So I'm going to make a uh, This Week in Baseball video. It's going to be more of just me talking. Uh, again, these are to my subscribers or anyone else out there, um, but I, I really just feel that I need to um, get something out there about some of these things. Because these are you know, these are huge trades and signings and will affect the rest of the offseason and, of course, the season next year. And I think it's very important to cover these things because uh, if this was any other time in the offseason, I'd be making videos on all of these. Um, and I'd be able to put my input on all of them. Uh, and I think that you should expect that. If you have subscribed to me, you should expect that I make videos on every signing and every trade. Uh, I'm sorry I have not been able to this week. Uh, my grandma died. Uh, I know it's I'm using it as an excuse, but I mean... I, I just wasn't feeling it this week. Uh, but there was a lot of big trades that happened. Uh, when I say that, I mean two. And then uh, there was a few signings that I want to talk about, at least get my input on. Uh, the Rays did extend Evan Longoria. No surprise there. I mean, obviously, you're not expecting them to sign them him for even more years. He's going to be a Ray his whole career. Uh, and, I mean, that's great for the Rays. They're putting a lot of money into him. I wish that more people would show up at the, their ballpark. I think they look, obviously, pretty good for the, the AL East. Uh, I'm not going to make any bold predictions about that division yet. i got to see the rest of the offseason, how it plays out. Uh, the Red Sox could be a player in that division. You never know. I think that they uh, are probably, well, now it looks like the Nationals are the favorite, again, to sign Adam LaRoche. But if they don't, it looks like the Red Sox are right behind them. I think the Red Sox, have, they've got to sign Mike Napoli, in my opinion. And I think that the AL East will be a very competitive division. I do not just give the AL East to the Blue Jays. I think the Blue Jays have a great team. I think this is a 90-plus win team. If you look at the Wharfs, for all the guys that they have acquired recently, and you add it up onto uh, their year last year, they're looking very good, obviously. But I do not necessarily see them as, well, they're, you know, for sure going to be the Yankees. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be very close. Now, the Yankees, pretty much this offseason, have just been trying to stay afloat. I mean, the fact that you have all these free agents, Nick Swisher, uh, Mariano Rivera, so many different guys, you just need to find a way to re-sign some of these guys. And they're not going to re-sign Swisher. So the fact that they did sign Andy Pettit, they did sign Mario Rivera, I think they're going in the right direction. Hiroki Kuroda, that was a big one. Uh, they're pretty much just staying afloat, signing pitchers that they need to sign. These are, again, these are older veteran guys that are providing solid jobs. And, I mean, signing Andy Pettit to, like, a $12 million contract for one year, it sounds ridiculous if you were saying that last year. I mean, he, he signed a very low salary uh, to re-sign with the Yankees. But, you know, the way he pitched last year and uh, the inflated pitching market, or just inflated free agent market in general. Uh, when you see B.J. Upton get $75 million guaranteed on a five-year deal, you really do see uh, how, I would say, ridiculous this market is. Uh, but, you know, you got to get used to it. Uh, you know, it's sad that we see so much money in baseball, I think, in a way. But uh, in the same sense, it's been building up for years, and you have each team will be getting $25 million additionally uh, and part of the new bargaining agreement. I mean, you have some positives in teams that, uh, you know, didn't have guaranteed money uh, for the next few years can, can up their payroll. But you see the Pirates go out and spend, the, you know, that $18, $17 million on a guy like Russell Martin. Uh, this is, Russell Martin's a former all-star. He showed great talent in Los Angeles. He's always had the power. He's not really an average guy. I think he will improve his numbers going to the NL. And I think for the Pirates, is a perfect fit for them. I wasn't expecting the Pirates to go out and get a bunch of guys this offseason. No one would. Their payroll is going to be continue to stay low. Uh, they're in a very tough division in the sense that the Reds and the Cardinals 
and potentially the Brewers are all going to be competitive for at least another few years. Um, and the Pirates have really been just treading water for a few years, just trying to get over 500. They look better and better every year, and every year they end up not getting over 500. I mean, this is a team that started off really hot. You have Andrew McCutcheon, who was hitting over 400. You know, you just have a great team, a lot of good young pitching. It kind of, uh, you know, tore down towards the end. And, you know, I say that every year where the Pirates start off really well, when people are getting ahead of themselves, I say, you know what, just wait in a month or two. They'll be back down to earth, and, you know, they probably won't be ahead. You know, they'd be lucky to be over 500. For a while, people were saying whether they were going to make the playoffs. At the end of the day, I think all Pirates fans, or most Pirates fans, I would say, would be happy just to get over 500. I know it's, it seems like kind of a petty accomplishment uh, when you want to make the playoffs year in, year out, and then you settle for under 500 or just trying to get over 500. But really, I think that the Pirates need to take uh, one step at a time, and I think they need... They absolutely need to get over 500 in 2013. If they don't, they're going to have big problems with the fan base, which they already have, uh, Which with, with those problems that came out a few years ago about the payroll and how much money they're making and how much, you know, and, and who they're putting out in the field. And uh, they've been a team notorious for making deals uh, and cutting payroll and finding all-stars, homegrown stars, uh, and then trading them away. So, uh, you know, we saw that a lot a few years ago, and I think that they're getting back to the basics. They're getting back to developing players and now some free agents. So getting Russell Martin is a big accomplishment for them. I think it provides some solid offense. You can put him in a lot of different spots in the lineup. Um, He'll definitely be an important piece, and if you have Pedro Alvarez um, still improving and you have a few other guys uh, coming up for the Pirates, Starling Marte, uh, a young outfielder, I mean, this is this is a team that potentially uh, can at least get over 500. Again, I'm not expecting them to win the NL Central. they got a very tough division, and keeping uh, staying in the NL Central, we have the Reds signing Jonathan Broxton. Wow, I mean, we just saw how inflated this market is. Uh, absolutely a ridiculous amount of money. It's a three-year, um, you know, twenty-something million-dollar contract. Let me find the actual amount. I believe it was twenty-two or maybe twenty-five. Uh, okay, yeah, twenty-one million dollars. And there's some bonus in there. You know, he, he gets four million in 2013, seven million in 2014, nine million in 2015, and then and a nine million option for 2016. Now this is why it's just so it. <laughs> This closing market is absolutely ridiculous, and not even just a closing market, but pitching market in general and relief pitching in particular, I would say. Uh, you have, you know, this guy is still very young, which is a very high upside for him. You know, he had a great ERA uh, with the Reds and the Royals last offseason, or last season. You know, uh, you know we're, we're coming close to the winter meetings, and last year, right about this time, I was telling myself, you know, uh, as, as an avid follower of the Cardinals, and so many other teams, you know, I try to not be too biased, and I try to watch every team and see the different situations, and uh, and try to be fair in that sense. But I saw really the opportunity for the Cardinals to pick up a cheap setup guy who was going to be absolutely dominant. Now it turns out the Cardinals didn't need him uh, because guys like Mitchell Boggs uh, and younger arms stepped in, and Jason Mott, of course, had that great season as a closer. Uh, and the Reds did need Jonathan Broxton, and the Royals needed him for some trade value, but. You look at this guy last year, and I was, a, you know, a very strong advocate for him. And you know, I think it was somewhat of a risk to take on him, but you know, you're you're paying four million dollars last year on a guy who has been an all-star, who has been a very good closer, who can throw very fast as a power pitcher, and he comes out, and now he's getting a three-year, twenty-one million dollar contract. I mean, this is a guy who's getting a contract that Heath Bell got. Um, I mean, this is it, it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money for a closer. Uh, and it shows the direction that Major League Baseball is going in when you're paying a closer eight, nine million dollars in a few years. So I think the Reds obviously have shown in the past that they're willing to spend on the ninth inning. Uh, and, you know, they don't have that much money to play around with, but they needed to get this done to solidify their bullpen. And I think they have uh, with Sean Marshall. And now you have Jonathan Broxton for a few years. I think their bullpen looks very good and they will stay competitive. Uh, the NL Central is a very inter interesting division, but the most fun division to watch this year, I think, will be the two East divisions. Now, that can change very easily. Uh, now that the Angels have signed Ryan Madsen and acquired Jordan Walden, I think that it makes the AL West an extremely fun division to watch. Last year, the division to watch was the AL West. In my opinion, when you when you see um, Albert Pujols and you see the Rangers go the absolutely opposite direction, um, with guys uh, like you, Darvish, and such, 
it was really fun to watch. Well, what happened in the AL West was kind of inexplainable. You have the Angels not even make the postseason. You have the Rangers losing on the last day to the Oakland Athletics, who came out of nowhere. So going into this year, you have the AL West, which is it's just going to be a bloodbath is really what it's going to be. I mean, you have the Angels going for pitchers. They go out and acquire Tommy Hansen. Excuse me, I, was, I said Jordan Walden. They traded Jordan Walden. They acquire Tommy Hansen, a solid number three starter who's had injury problems um, but still does find a way to win games. I think he's a solid starter for them and can get back to his you know, 2009, 2010 days. Uh, the injury problems will linger, but uh, I think that it's really just risk for risk here. They're, they're, you know, they're trading a very good pitcher, and they're getting a very good pitcher, uh, a control pitcher for a few years. So, uh, you know, before this season, too, Tommy Hansen was, had a lot of trade value, and definitely his value has gone way down after the season that he had uh, and the injury problems, but I think that um, he's a good fit for the Los Angeles Angels. Now, um, they are able to trade Jordan Walden because they signed Ryan Madsen. This could be very bad for him if Ryan Madsen does not turn out well, though. You know, if he does not save at least 30 games for this team, you're going to have some problems with the Los Angeles bullpen again. So I think that there was some risk there giving away uh, some very good depth that they have in their bullpen. But, um, you know, they have some internal options. They had a very good closer last year. They can slide him into the setup spot. You know, they have some options, definitely. I think they're not done, obviously, for pitching. They're going to go after starting. Now they have two spots to fill unless they want to. Uh, keep uh, General Williams in the starting rotation. So they have a lot of options. I think that they're going to go hard after Zach Greinke. I'm not sure if they're going to sign him. Uh, the Dodgers are going hard after Zach Greinke. If they don't sign him, I think they're, they're probably go to Kyle Loesch because really at this point they can buy any player they want. They want to win right now. They don't need the draft pick, and Kyle Loesch is a very solid pitcher who at this point, um, I'm not going to say is a value sign at all. He's like the exact opposite of that. But if, he, if, they, if they can find a way to get him for a decent price, considering all the prices that these pitchers are signing. I mean, when Andy Pettit is getting an average contract for $12 million, of course it's only a one-year deal, but even that, I mean, these older guys are getting some pretty big contracts, so you're going to have to pay up if you want starting pitching in this offseason. Now, uh, some other news that happened, of course, the Angels and Braves, where we were talking about Tommy Hansen and Jordan Walden. Now, for the Braves, uh, this is, again, the NL East and the AL East are extremely um, fun and close divisions going into 2013. I'm not sure whether to say that the Nationals have the edge or not. I think that the Braves are getting better and better, and I think that now they free up $4 million from this Tommy Hansen deal. They can go out and they can sign a complimentary bat. They can sign a third baseman. They could sign, um, you know, there's some options out there. They could sign an outfielder, a third baseman. Uh, now that they're starting pitching, you know, their rotation had always been, uh, has always had depth. And, and what seems kind of funny is they trade, you know, one of their best starters, and they don't get, you know, one of the positions that they really need, a third baseman, an outfielder. No, they go out and they trade for a reliever. Uh, you know, and they obviously didn't want to overpay on the market, so they go out and get Jordan Walden. Now, whether this is part of some master plan, I don't know, but now they have the most dominant um, relief pitching, I would say, in Major League Baseball. You have Johnny Ventures, you have Craig Kimball, you have Erica Flattery, and now you have Jordan Walden. These are all guys that, you know, some of them are power pitchers, some of them are just control, get on the ground, ground ball pitchers. Either way, they dominate you, and really the game is over after the sixth inning with this relief pitching. So I think they're going to be a lot better because of this, but they still need do, do need some offense. They need, you know, potentially a third baseman, where it depends on where they put Martin Prado. Um, and, you know, so they do need some offense. Now, getting B.J. Upton was, I would say, the biggest story of the week just because he's one of the biggest free agents, him and Michael Bourne. It was between those two. For a while, it looked like the Phillies had the momentum for B.J. Upton. Then it looked like they were going after Michael Bourne. Then it looked like there were four or five teams that could potentially go after B.J. Upton. Um, at the end of the day, I think it was between the Braves and the Phillies. Uh, and it was really who wants to pay more for an outfielder that they're selling, you know, has not hit their prime yet. Which, you know, he's 28, 29 years old. He probably hasn't hit his prime yet. And if he has, or he's just starting into it, and the power, you know, could potentially be the first thing to show. It usually isn't the first thing to show. Usually you see the batting average go up first. But this is a guy who's had consistently low batting average, consistently low on base percentage, and is, has never really put it together all in one season. He's um, had some good offensive years here and there, but he hasn't really put it all together. So I think the Braves are signing this guy 
uh, valuing him at what he's doing right now at maybe nine to ten million dollars, but looking at his potential and saying that's going to push his value up to about fifteen million dollars per year, and that's what made them push the button. I think another thing is there just weren't that many options. If you're going to go out and trade for Denard's fan, you're going to have to give up some young talent and. Um, at this point, you know, I'm wondering why they didn't just go after maybe a guy like Denard Span and give up one of their younger starting pitchers. But I think they really, what they found was important is they wanted speed. They wanted more athleticism and they wanted power. And they can find that in BJ Upton. I think they, you know, they chose obviously to go to the free agent market. They obviously knew that they could have gone out and made a trade for a guy like Dexter Fowler, for a guy um, like Denard Span, who a day later we see go to the Nationals. And the Nationals had to give up a good pitcher in Alex Myers. Some people are saying that the Twins got a bad deal on that, considering the Nars fan has three years left of control. Uh, you know, any team that can get an outfielder of his stature uh, for three years is a great deal for them. I think the, the Nationals got just a hell of a deal out of it. I think that to be able to get a center fielder like that, put him anywhere in your lineup, um, you could have him leading off, you could have, uh, you can have him, you know, really anywhere. I think they do want him near the front of the lineup, obviously, potentially leading off. Uh, and when you put that with guys like Bryce Harper and Jason Worth and Ryan Zimmerman and potentially Adam LaRoche and they can trade Michael Morse, uh, you know, you're going to see a very good team this year. The Nationals already have a great team, great pitching staff, great young pitching staff, Jordan Zimmerman and Strasburg and Gio Gonzalez. Um, you know, they got, they have a lot of talent there. Uh, and I think that they're probably still the favorites to win the NL East, but I think the Braves are getting better and better. Uh, they really buffed up their relief pitching. If they can find a way to get another good offensive piece, I think that, you know, David Wright could have been a potential option for them. I think he could have been an option for a lot of teams, but the Mets did extend them. That was another story uh, of the week. The Mets finally getting the job done there, pleasing their fans, signing their franchise hitter David Wright to a long contract. So he'll be a Met probably his whole career. I mean, the contract ends right around 37, 38. Might re-up for a few years. I might just retire. Either way, uh, they do secure their best hitter. Now, uh, that doesn't mean they're done. They could trade Ari Dickey. They could sign him to an extension. I think they'll sign him to a two-year deal worth about $30 million. I think that Ari Dickey would accept that, no doubt. And I think that the Mets should be able to offer that. I mean, $15 million dollars a year for a guy who just won the Cy Young when this team's paying 20 to $25 million, potentially $25 plus million dollars for that Greinke a year. I think a team should be willing to go 15 for a guy like Ari Dickey. But the age and the Mets' financial situation could definitely limit their offer. But um, if they can sign both those guys, I think Mets fans wouldn't be happy. But I think there are some Mets fans that might want them to trade Ari Dickey and try to get some young talent right now because they know that you know, they probably won't be competitive in this East Division this year. Um, they might get lucky, not get lucky, they might play extremely well, surprise a lot of people, uh, and get a wild card, but again, that's highly unlikely. When you look at every division, there's teams that stand out. I mean, I haven't even talked about the NL West, I haven't talked about the AL Central, and I haven't even talked about uh, the AL West, or, okay, yeah, I have talked about the AL West. I'm sorry, I haven't talked about the AL Central or uh, two of the divisions in the National League, or at least one of them. So, I mean, there's a lot of good teams out there. Each division has them. Um, you have the Cardinals and the Reds and the Brewers in the Central. You have the, um, in the East, you obviously have the Phillies who uh, could get very good with one or two signings or maybe a big trade. Uh, you have the Braves, obviously, who could be, if you follow the hype, they could potentially be a favorite for the NL East. I would say a lot of people still would prefer the Nationals. Uh, just from initial predictions from last year and, and, and how good they are going forward and, of course, what they're building right now. And then you look at the AL and you have the AL Central. You have the Tigers. You have the White Sox. You have the, the Indians. It's going to be really, a, unless they do something dramatic, it's, I don't think it's going to be that much of a different year from last year. But you never know. I mean, they, they have some guys that hopefully won't be injured as much and they have a new manager. So they can surprise some people. Um, but I just, it's really... It's a really interesting offseason so far. I would say that. I think that when you see guys like Denard Span already being dealt, you see the Braves sign B.J. Upton. Uh, this winter meetings will be extremely fun to watch. I think there's going to be very busy, a lot of deals going on, some free agent signings, uh, and definitely some trades. I think more trades maybe than ever. Because of the free agent market, how inflated it is, I think a lot of teams are looking at other options. They want to get creative. They want to get a deal done, but they don't want to go out in the free agent market. 
Uh, so teams that are zeroing on free agents, obviously, I think we'll get those deals done. Otherwise, I think they're going to go off the trade route. It's almost 20 minutes here. Sorry for rambling on. I'm famous for that. Uh, so I will stop your agony and your pain if you've even watched this far, which you probably haven't, because I've literally been rambling on about just the baseball news. Again, this is this week in baseball because I had uh, a difficult week and I couldn't get any videos done. I apologize again. It's not like me. Uh, so I, again, will apologize for this 20-minute video just talking baseball. But if you do enjoy listening to people talk baseball, then maybe there's a slight possibility that you would have enjoyed this. Again, I apologize in advance. Thank you for watching. Again, expect some more videos on the podcast tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Eastern. Real Sports Talk podcast. And, of course, follow me on Twitter. I'll be talking one, two, three. Some more live, up-to-date updates from that that, are, that don't include 20-minute videos. And, uh, of course, the winter meetings next week. Uh, cheers to that. Uh, it should be a very busy and fun week for baseball. The most important week in the offseason, in my opinion. I think the most fun for most fans. Uh, a lot of the big deals happened last year. You know, Albert Pools, a lot of different things happened right around the time. So we'll see what happens this year. Um, previewing the winter means we'll see if Zach Greinke gets signed. We'll see if Adam LaRoche gets signed. Uh, some big trade names, possibilities. We'll talk more about that later. Thank you guys for watching. Again, this is MLB Talk 123 or Jack McNeil. See ya.